already yeah. know the square I be, dog. I ain't being cocky, but Philly, what I'm reppin', watch me check it like it's hockey. I ain't tryna get it twisted. If you get it, then you got me. If you with it, cool. If not, I'll treat you like a Tamagotchi. I'ma let you down, point. Yeah, I never disappoint. What's going on, guys? Jay Hoyt back with you today. Welcome back to episode number 27 of the Seattle Attack franchise mode. You guys remember the last couple of episodes. We've actually been doing pretty well. Accidentally hit a button there. But we're sitting in third in our division right now in the central division. Uh, at the bottom of the screen, you can see it. We got 74 points. Only four points off the top of the division. Minnesota and St. Louis stand in our way of that. We're very, very close. Like I said, you know, in the Western Conference, we went the wrong way. You know, 84 points is the top. So we still have about 10 points to go till we reach the uh, the top of the Western Conference. But we are at the trade deadline. Well, we're the day before the trade deadline. And uh, last episode, I told you I wanted to get bring in some depth. And uh, I told you I, we had our forwards, right? I was kind of happy with the forwards. But then I kind of wanted to improve our defense a little bit. And not really improve our defense, but get a little bit more depth as well. So we actually have three trades now. They're not really that major. There's no superstars getting involved. However, all of them provide our team with a better opportunity to win going forward. So let's start right away. So the first trade is going to involve Ryan Dezingle. Now, although I do like Ryan Dezingle as a player, performance this year isn't really worth his $2.85 million contract plus going into next year we probably weren't going to re-sign him because if you would have wanted a similar contract you know we probably just wouldn't have done it we probably would have signed someone else for a fourth line role but uh, we're trading him to the LA Kings now also note that the LA Kings have absolutely sucked this year and they are 1840 and 5 so they're not doing too well either However, they have another left wing with the name of his Adrian, I believe. Yep, Adrian Kempe. You know, he's listed as a fourth liner, former first uh, first round pick. However, he's doing really, really well in LA. He's got 36 points on the year and I think like 50 something games, 63 games. So he's doing very, very well this year on a team that is absolutely doing nothing. I feel like if we make this trade, it's a simple one for one. You know, actually, we could probably get a pick on this. Now that I look at the trade value, I was just looking at kind of overalls and salary goes when I was looking at this. But if you look at the trade value on it, it looks like we could probably grab maybe a third, maybe a fourth round pick from this. So that'll help us. Third, probably out of the question here. I don't think that's, yeah, that's definitely not going to go through. Uh, how about a fourth round pick? That that should definitely go through, right? No? Fifth. It's got to be a fifth then. There we go. Boom. There it is. All right. Trade accepted. So, you know what? Just kind of a minor upgrade. You know, Ryan Dezingle, you know, he's been great for us. He's played on the third line at, at some points. And, uh, you know, he's been pretty good. However, like I said, moving forward, going into the playoffs here, we're going to need, you know, the best team we can get. I believe Kempe makes us a better team. And, uh, you know, 36 points playing on that line. You know, that's almost as many as Berchi, and, uh, you know, he could probably realistically play on our th second or third line. But to have a guy put up points on the fourth line is absolutely incredible. Now, the next trade, this one is strictly for depth. Now, this one, we are going to be trading away one of our prospect centermen. And this one is going to be Jay Nolan. Now, Jay Nolan down here is kind of stuck. And, uh, you know, he's playing behind Zibanejad, who's, you know, a good overall. He's playing behind Callahan, I believe, and he's playing behind Hainsey. So we also have Linzen, who we put in the lineup recently down there, and, uh, and Markov. So he's kind of kind of got left out, 23 years old. He hasn't really grown in, you know, a year or two. So he's kind of just accessed down there. But uh, we're trading him to the Vegas Golden Knights, the other expansion team. Griffin Reinhardt is basically all he's going to be is depth for us. You know, we're bringing on a $2.8 million contract, but it's only for one year. There's no contract extension on it. And uh, it's just simple one for one. Might have to throw on a pick here. Okay, yeah, we have to throw in a pick. So, uh, you know, that's no problem. I mean, I kind of expected to. I mean, I have listed under there pick question mark. So, 
And I'm not really surprised. But we can always throw in our fourth round pick from this year. That way it's uh, it might help them out. But they don't want our fourth. Uh, I don't really want to give up our third. How about we go next year? What do we have for next year? We Okay. So let's go with our fourth and our fifth from this year. Because our picks are going to be super late. There we go. So it kind of... We don't have the, uh, the the extra third round pick this year. So, uh, you know, this is definitely going to help us there. So, uh, Reinhardt, perfect. That helps us out there. And our last trade. Now, this is the biggest trade out of them all. And this one kind of got me thinking. And the fact that, like, I hate to trade away, you know, someone we've tried to develop. But on our defensive side, you look at our team. And we have Lindros, right? Perfect left-handed defense. We made a huge trade to get him. B. Gross, again, staple in our top four right now. Alonco, and then we have Shattenkirk locking down the top four. Well, upcoming, we don't really have any good left-handed defensemen, so we don't really have to trade away anyone old. Well, we don't really have anyone old either, but Goldman. Now, when I was going through potential contract extensions, I offered Alonco a contract extension of three years at 3.5 mil, and that's kind of right where he wanted it. I think it was like 3.2 or whatever, but you know what? It's it's kind of like the same thing. But, uh, you know, that's a, a bit of an upgrade for him, obviously, in his salary. But I tried to offer Goldman an extension, and he wanted like $5 million. So for kind of unproven guy in the NHL, wanting that type of money right away doesn't really make sense. And plus... Goldman, you know, could be a very good player someday. We'll be getting back. Maybe, maybe not. But a for, uh, former second, you know, second round pick. You know, he's doing kind of average. I mean, has, he's minus, has four points. Not really the best. I understand he's a defensive defenseman. But there's another defensive defenseman out there that looks to be a lot better. Plus, Goldman has a lot of trade value, which will help us going forward. So we are going to be trading. What was it? Is it Frank? I don't remember. Franklin, Franklin Goldman to the New Jersey Devils. In exchange for John Moore. Now, I told you guys I didn't want to sign Goldman to a $5 million contract, especially when he's unproven. But a guy like John Moore, he's 32. He knows how to win. Former first-round pick. You know, he has the stats that we need. Plus, he's doing pretty well. He's going you know, plus in the uh, in the plus minus. He's doing okay with the points. And, uh, you know, his salary is a little bit more than I wanted to spend. However, we're going to try to get a part of that retained. So if you look, obviously the, uh, the trade value is a little bit different. So we're going to take off about 1.5 mil just to kind of see if that will work. So 1.5 retained, and then I also put down second or third round pick I was going to try to get. So let's try to get that. So it looks like it'll have to be, they don't have a, okay, I don't really want to take the third because they probably wouldn't give that up. So let's go, ah, gosh, do we just try to get two thirds maybe? I don't know. Let's try two thirds, see what that does. So they're not interested in that. So we're actually take off this year's and try to get next year's to help out next year's pick. Uh, they're not... Comfortable retain that amount of salary. So how about just like a million bucks? It's only a million for for a, an extra year. Okay, so they they don't want to retain any salary. I understand because they are pretty close to the the salary cap budget. But uh, how about just a third add on to it? Okay, that works. So I probably should have tried a second on there, but you know what? I feel like this is gonna make us a better team. You know, John Moore also. Uh, you know, I think it was what one overall or two overall better, or maybe it was the same. I don't remember, but either way, I feel like those two or those three trades are going to make us a better team going forward. Plus, we're gearing up for the uh, for the playoffs, and plus, John Moore, veteran, knows how to win, knows how to be a good defenseman. Plus, we're pairing him with Lilgren, who is doing uh, fantastic this year, and uh, you know, it helps with our plus minus issue, helps with our defensive, you know, help. I guess I'll call it and. Uh, you know, it helps us going forward. So I've talked on long enough. We've made enough trades for right now. I'm happy with the team we have. We have extra forwards. Now we have extra defensemen. We have an extra goaltender. I'm ready. I'm ready to gear up for the playoffs. Get ready for the playoff run. But first thing we got to do is get to the playoffs. We got to go about a month 
and then we got to turn on injuries. So we start, I guess, March out with 34, 23, and what was it, 6 or something like that. So Lanco, Scott, I forgot him, I offered him too. But we started out 34, 23, and 6, and we win our first game. Keeping everything the same. We got some promotions going on this month. And I'm super happy with the team right now. I mean, like I said in my last video, in the Draft Champions video, probably from here on out will be all franchise mode videos, uh, at least for NHL, unless something else crazy happens. But uh, then we're starting right into NHL 19. So most likely just trying to finish this out as much as I can before NHL 19. But I really want to win a cup. Obviously, I want to get to at least the Stanley Cup Finals. But, uh, you know, I'm very, very excited, very, very proud of my team, of uh, everything we've accomplished so far. You know, we were very, very close. We made it to the playoffs, I think, all but, what, two years? You know, all but three years, I think. So we're getting there, right? We built our team up, and, uh, you know, we're getting to where we want to be. But it does look like we have 94 points right now. We are sitting in a playoff position, and it uh, looks like we're in the wild card spot. We can still that no one's clinched the division yet. We still can clinch the division. We are two or four points off from the top of our division. But let's go turn injuries on and continue out with the rest of the season. We got five games left in the regular season. We're starting against New Jersey. Then we so we have we have three Eastern Conference games and only two Western Conference. So let's just simulate a couple days here and see what happens. So we got one point, And of course, we get an injury right away to our AHL team. Let's quickly swap these guys. Not sure if you guys caught it, but we ended up making the playoffs. We officially qualified. Uh, but however, we have not started the month out real great. So since we are definitely in the playoffs and the AHL team, I can almost guarantee they're in the playoffs at that record. 51, 18, and 9. That's absolutely incredible. But I'm going to go put in our backup goalies. That way our starters don't get hurt before the playoffs. Three games left here for the regular season. Let's keep it going. We got Chicago, Edmonton, and Columbus. Ooh, Ryan Spoon out of the mild concussion April 9th. So I don't think that is, I think that's less than a week. So we recover from the injury here. We'll, uh, we'll keep Ryan out for the rest of the regular season. Uh, Spoon, let's do the same thing. Give Kemp a couple of games. We called up the guy that was doing the best in the AHL. Just get him a couple games. See what he ends up doing. You know, he deserved it during the regular season. So, uh, you know, that's what, who we went with. But, uh, you know, a very, very rough last month. I mean, well, if you even look up to, to March, we got a couple losses to end the month. We went against Vegas and won. And then we lost, 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 win. And then we lost again. So... We definitely made the playoffs. That's no question. We end up finishing with, that. where is it, 97 points, a record of 45, 30, and 7. Huge year for our team. Very, very proud of what we've accomplished. But uh, let's go look at uh, stats, and then let's look at who we're going to be facing in the playoffs. So here we are at the stats screen. And it kind of looks pretty, uh, pretty straightforward, if I don't say so myself. So we had Turris leading the way, I think. Is that once again? Or was, no, Bester was at the top last year. What, he had 40-something goals. But a very, very good turnout for our first line. All 50-plus points. Turris had the 60-plus, but Bester, again, massive goal-scoring year. So glad we picked him up. You know, he came off of a 41-goal performance last year. But uh, this year, he had a little bit more help with the help of Hoffman, who I don't remember how many goals he had when we got him. I think it was, was there like 20 or something like that? I don't remember. But uh, we had help from Hoffman, Berchi, you know, Spooner. I mean, you guys, look, all like mid-teens goals for these guys. So that's great to see. 21 goals for Horvat. You know, that's very, uh, very, very interesting for a second-line center. But uh, you know what? Hey, he put up the goals. Who really cares? Cody Glass. I guess a decent year. He's growing kind of weird where he's really good at skating and senses, but he's kind of weak at everything else. But 38 points, it's still nothing to, to look over. I mean, if we still had like a Pajot on the team, that's something that he, he would have done. So you know, very, very similar there. Tyler Bozak did exactly what he was supposed to do down there. Tanaby, 10 points, had the penalty minutes. Uh, I mean, he just did kind of exactly what he was supposed to do. 
you know, hopefully his uh, the rest of the stats look good. But I got, that's a really good rookie year for Tanaby. You know, Kemp came up for a couple games and played on to our defense. Once again, Kevin Shattenkirk leading the way, 51 points. B. Gross behind him at 26. Logren with a massive rookie year, 22 points. No goals, but hey, doesn't really matter. Lindros, big rookie year. Or that's not rookie. Is that rookie year for him? Technically, it's his rookie year. I mean, last year he played the eight games, but, you know, other than that, it doesn't really matter. But I guess good first year for him, full, uh, first full year, I guess I'll call it. Uh, Alonco, hey, he can put up assists now too. So 10 points, positive 18, low penalty minutes. I'll take that. Glad we signed him to an extension. I know we just got Reinhardt and uh, Moore put up a couple points while he was here. So uh, great to see that. Let's check out our goaltenders. So after the flawless start from Subban, he kind of maintained hit his uh, his stats. I mean, obviously he lost you know a few games here and there, but you know he did exactly what we wanted him to do: maintain the uh, the backup role, and uh, you know good stats all around. I mean, obviously I'd love to be improved there. Still would like to get a better starting goaltender, to be honest, because I think we still have one more year. Yeah, we have one more year of Fitzpatrick, but still might be looking in the off season, maybe free agency, maybe in the draft. Not really sure yet. Uh, very happy with our goaltenders in the NHL. Let's take a quick peek at the AHL. What a beautiful year by Ian Scott. You know, his first full year of being a starter in the AHL. You know, he definitely uh, deserved to be a starter down there. And with uh, Valheinen and Subban there, you know, it was obviously very, very tough to do, to do that. But uh, Jarosina backing him up. Absolutely beautiful performance from him. Under a two goals against. You love to see that one. So uh, very proud. That's exactly why they went, what was it, 58 and whatever. Or not 58, 50, whatever. They did very well in the, in the end. Uh, defense down there. Dobson leading the way. You know, Other than that, everyone else kind of just hanging in there. And our forwards. Holy cow. So this was the guy, Kip Kemp. Former third round pick leading the way, 80 points. You love to see that. Jesper Zabanajad, 41 goals, 73 total points. Bell right behind them. Really surprised he wasn't at the 80 plus point mark uh, in the AHL, but he was playing at second line because Kemp was doing so well. Uh, you know, Hainsey, Ryan, we've got to put back in the lineup. But uh, very, very nice to see. It looks like Lindsay did well while he was in the lineup. Nelson did very well while he was in the lineup. And uh, all the other guys, they filled in during injury times. But very, very proud of our HL team. Once again, doing very, very well. Let's go take a quick look at the stats, see where everyone kind of ended up. We ended up 13th overall in the entire league at 97 points. We were at a four-way four tie for, thir uh, for 11th, I guess I'll call it. As far as points goes. But let's go through them real quick. So we had 220 goals for. Uh, I was at the bottom of the league. Or bottom 15 I should say. Uh, goals against. We are a very good defensive team. I mean Vink, I mean, look at that. The one and two teams. Were right there as the two best defensive teams. And then we're right there with then number three. So very happy with our defensive performance. Uh, what else do we got? Power play 19.9%. Uh, we're at the we're about midline like to be a little bit better at doing that What else we got penalty kill percentage? We are at the bottom 79 point whatever and we are at the bottom. So, okay I think that improved though from our uh, from our last uh, thing. We had two shorthanded goals and Then our our final stats were 21 16 and 4 at home 24 14 and 3 away and our last 10 wasn't that great at 3 6 and 1 but hopefully we can uh, we can turn that momentum around. But uh, going into the playoffs, we have an opponent. Let's go find out who that is, and then let's scout them, see what we're in store for for the playoffs. So let's go a day or two here, see how long it is gonna go for. Okay, that's where we passed uh, we passed the win thing, we passed the sellout thing, so we have a little bit extra money. That's fine. We are facing off against Vancouver. But before we get into the scouting report on Vancouver, let's go take a quick look at the bracket.
I guess I call it the playoff tree, whatever you want to call it. It's the same thing, but it looks like we have a lot of very, very good teams. The three teams that all we always seem to play are on our side of the bracket. Calgary, Edmonton are facing off against in the first round. Us in Vancouver are facing off against in the first round. Uh, what else we got? St. Louis and Minnesota, Colorado, and San Jose. So we got some good teams on that side. Carolina, interesting. The Islanders, Pittsburgh, Columbus, Buffalo. All right. And Boston, and then Florida, and the Rangers. So very, very good uh, good playoff tree there. Let's go take a quick look at what our HL team is going to do. They're actually in the Eastern Conference. So they got Rochester, and then they face the winner of Belleville and Binghamton. And then they'll play the winners of Bridgeport and Hartford and Charlotte and Lehigh Valley. So very, very good run. Obviously, uh, you know, lots of very, very good teams. However, extremely confident in our AHL team as uh, the record would uh, would put us. So let's go take a quick look at um, Vancouver and see what we're in store for. So let's click on it. The Vancouver Canucks. What do we got in store? So Tobias Ryder. Stro oh gosh, these guys are kind of stacked. So Skinner, Strom, Silverberg, Patrick, Dadnov still there, kind of surprising. They got Backlund, this guy, Vertanen, another good young guy, Christian Dvorak. What has he done since we released him? He had one really good year, but then he kind of sucked after that, so... Hey, I'm uh, I'm glad we got rid of him. I don't remember the trade at this point. I think it was, what, him for Berchi or something like that? So glad we did that. But uh, very, very good forward group. You know, we're uh, we're pretty matched. They got the uh, the four stack down the middle as far as centers go. But uh, so very, very strong forward group. Let's look at defense real quick. So, of course, the young uh, franchise defenseman, Rasmus Dahlin. They re-signed him too, so we're not going to be able to get him. So uh, him and Aliu Levy. All right, Brendan Smith, Ben Hutton. All right, so uh, they don't have a single right-hand defenseman, which is interesting. Let's go take a look at goaltenders. Thatcher Demko is still there, of course. Where did he go this year? He went 42-16 and 16 with a very, very good stats. So, uh, wow, who do they got scratched? Philip Cheadle, or Cheadle, whatever his name is. Wow, Zach Joseph, they don't have him playing. That's kind of surprising. He was the third overall pick. <laughs> Might try to go snag him. Jeez. Maham, wow. All right, go to Eakin. All right, so we're in store for a, a very, very tough matchup. Very, very good forwards. You know, kind of weaker on the defensive side. But, uh, you know, with their top line plus uh, a decent second line with very good goaltending. It's going to be a good series. I can tell you that much. That is all for me today. I mean, uh, we got from the trade deadline up until the start of the playoffs. And uh, we're facing off against Vancouver. So it's going to be a very, very good matchup. Very, very tough matchup going into the playoffs. But, of course, when isn't it? Anyway, guys, that is it for me today. If you guys did enjoy, hit the like button down below if you have not already. Hit the subscribe button. And as always, guys, we'll see you next time. I want you forever. Ain't no